good evening, everyone. Silence. Good evening. Uh, as you can see, my topic for today's presentation is the significance of the ostrich eggshells discovered at Patne, Maharashtra. Uh, this is a map of the Tapi River, Maharashtra, India. So, uh, Patne is a prominent Upper Paleolithic or Paleolithic site in the Jalgaon district of Maharashtra. In fact, I would uh, say that it is one of the most prominent Upper Paleolithic sites in the country. Uh, it lies in the Central Tapi Basin. The Central Tapi Basin covers areas of uh, the districts of Dhule uh, and Jalgaon, as well as the northern areas of uh, the Nashik district. Archaeological explorations and excavations carried out in the central Tapi Basin, Basin have revealed some important archaeological information. Uh, the river Tapi is one of uh, the only two major rivers that flow from the east to the west, the other being the Narmada, of course. Uh, it is spread across three states, namely Madhya Pradesh, uh, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. It originates in Madhya Pradesh and uh, flows towards the Arabian Sea in Gujarat. Its total catchment area is around 65,145 square kilometers, most of which, that is uh, almost 80% of the total area, lies in the state of Maharashtra. The archaeological remains discovered in the region consist uh, of mostly stone tools, but also uh, ostrich eggshell pieces, including uh, an engraved specimen. Now, I mean, according to Sali, there were three engraved specimens that he had found during his excavations. But when I read other articles uh, by the likes of Bednarik, he mentions only one. So that is a question we need to address and resolve. Anyway. Beads of ostrich eggshell and estuarine, that is riverine shells, cowrie shells, and freshwater uh, shells were also discovered during the excavations. Now, the discovery of uh, cowrie shells, uh, that is marine shells, is very significant because, as we know, Patne lies in Jalgaon and Khandesh, and uh, the fact that marine shells were discovered over there implies a certain kind of uh, prehistoric trade that could have existed uh, almost 25,000 years ago, at least 25,000 years ago. The existence of ostriches in the central Tapi Basin during the prehistoric phase proven by the discovery of eggshell piece, uh, pieces is a remarkable discovery as it could help in the reconstruction of not just the migratory patterns of uh, the ostrich, but uh, also the migratory patterns of the prehistoric humans who uh, might have migrated to the central Tapi Basin in search of large animals like the ostrich, whose meat and eggs must have been a rich source of proteins, protein for the prehistoric hunter-gatherers. Now, before we begin the next, before we begin the next section, I would like to uh, uh, talk about the ostrich itself. The ostrich or the Struthio camelus is a large ratite or a flightless bird that is only found in Africa today. In fact, it is the largest living bird. The adult male could be around as tall as 9 feet and weigh more than 150 kgs. The body of the female is relatively smaller. The ostrich egg is also the largest in the world. Uh, it is around 6 inches in length and about 5 inches in diameter. According to Jain and others, the origin and evolution of ratites, the flightless birds, is generally associated with the concept or the theory of continental drift, that is the uh, continental drifting of Gondwana or Gondwana land over millennia. Uh, fossil or fossilized uh, eggshells of ratites in India have been found in different regions like the Shivaliks, uh, Central India, UP, Rajasthan, and Maharashtra. The eggshells were identified on the basis of certain morphological features such as diameter, thickness, and pore patterns. 
According to Jain and others, and I quote, avian fossil eggshells have been characterized as a potent source of preserved ancient DNA biomolecules, unquote. The paper titled Ancient DNA Reveals Late Pleistocene Existence of Ostriches in Indian Subcontinent, published in PLOS One in 2017, is based on the study of the first molecular evidence that points to the existence of ostriches in India. Interesting development in the field of uh, genetics and zooarchaeology. Uh, next slide. Yes. So, the discovery of an ostrich eggshell piece in the prehistoric excavation at Patne by Dr. Shankaranna Sali at the base of a gravel yielding tools of the advanced Middle Paleolithic was an important discovery as it uh, revealed the existence of ostriches in the region. According to Sali, the empty shells were probably used for storing water and food. Perhaps the bones and plumes of this bird were also brought in use, the former for making tools and the latter for body decoration. Uh, the other animals, that, uh, or prehistoric uh, animals discovered in the region were uh, wild horses and wild cattle. Uh, uh, it is interesting to note that the hippopotamus and the rhinoceros uh, were also existed in Maharashtra during the prehistoric period, as shown by the excavations carried out by uh, Dr. Vijay Sathe in the Manjra Valley in the district of Latur. As, men uh, as mentioned earlier, the Upper Paleolithic man had made significant progress materially. Uh, in his toolkit uh, and other remains, uh, in his toolkit, other remains uh, are reflect, uh, reflect further development in technology, more complex methods of hunting, increase in the number of crafts, aesthetic sense, and practice of arts. And how do we know this? We know this thanks to the discovery of the engraved ostrich eggshell as well as the ostrich eggshell beads discovered at Patne. The ostrich eggshell pieces recovered from the levels of phase 2D were sent for carbon-14 determination to the, uh, and I'm sorry if I, I'm pronouncing this wrongly as I don't know Dutch, but labor, uh, Laboratorium Voor Algemeen uh, Naturkund uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, the date obtained for this phase is around 25,000 plus minus 200 BP. Uh, Sadi states that the beginning of the Upper Paleolithic at Patne may well go back to around 35,000 years. Uh, and uh, the phase 2E at Patne might have lasted till about 10,000 years before present. Now, the two most uh, significant discoveries at Patne were, uh, as I've already mentioned, the ostrich eggshell beads and the engraved ostrich eggshell. So, uh, as one might know, very few prehistoric ostrich eggshell beads have been found in India so far. A couple of them have been, uh, have been found at Bhimbetka, whereas three ostrich eggshells uh, or eggshell beads were found at Patne, Maharashtra. The unique engraved ostrich eggshell piece discovered at Patne could be considered as one of the most important Upper Paleolithic discoveries in India. It is also an early example of uh, paleo art and symbolic meaning associated with the engraving. The discovery becomes even more significant as the ostrich eggshell, uh, eggshells were found in stratified layer and were not surface finds. Uh, the engravings were uh, perhaps made using a hard tool, like a stone tool, according to Bednarik. This is the en uh, engravings on the ostrich eggshell. It is, it is interesting to note that uh, the observations from the Middle Stone Age cultures uh, from South Africa, and particularly the large number of uh, around 270 fragments of engraved ostrich eggshells belonging to the Howison Spoot at Dieppe Kloof rock shelter in South Africa around 60,000 years ago uh, revealed the earliest evidence of an engraving tradition that became widespread gradually, as we see in the Upper Paleolithic evidence at Patne around 25,000 years ago. 
And I think this could be another avenue of research, the comparative analysis uh, of the ostrich eggshells found in South Africa and Patne. So uh, yeah. these are some of the engraved ostrich eggshells found in South Africa by Texier and his uh, colleagues. This, 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 this is the one at Patne. We see similar uh, designs, I mean, you know, the hatched designs and the parallel lines. So you know, there are similarities between the two. So in conclusion, I would say that uh, it is difficult to understand the exact behavior of modern humans uh, solely based on uh, basis, uh, solely based on stone tools recovered in the central Tapi basin. However, the lithic tools as well as the ostrich eggshell pieces and beads found in the central Tapi basin indicate that humans in that region relied on ostrich meat and eggs as a rich source of protein. The engraved ostrich eggshells and the ostrich eggshell beads indicate development of aesthetics, technology, symbolic and symbolic behavior in the region. The discovery of the ostrich eggshell pieces at Patne also revealed the existence of the ostrich in the Deccan region thousands of years ago, implying a very different paleo environment in the region. Uh, further research, lastly, further research on the origins of the ostrich in the Indian subcontinent and its possible relation with human migration or migratory patterns could lead to very interesting and meaningful results. I would like to acknowledge Dr. Shrikan Jadav for the personal discussion and suggestions while I was writing this paper. I would also like to thank Dr. Pallavi Nalavde Zamble and Dr. Supriya Rai for their encouragement at every stage of my research and studies. Thank you. These are my references. Thank you very much. <laughs>